Let's begin. Hello everyone. I'm giving myself 90 minutes to teach you what you need to know to begin teaching on Preply today or to become a better Preply teacher in the future. Welcome to teaching on Preply in the 2020s. Uh, this course will be updated and improved intermittently based on your feedback. So the best thing you could do is make sure that you leave us a review. This is brought to you by Teach Ahead. Teach Ahead is focused on educational technology. We have nothing to do with Preply. We are just a group of passionate online language teachers who want to try to make a difference with educational technology in the 2020s. Um, this is also known as ELT 2040. Teach on Preply in 90 minutes. Let's begin. Lesson number one out of 10, introduction to Preply. So what is Preply? Preply is an online service established in 2012. It links students with tutors and for customized learning across a variety of subjects. It provides a broad spectrum of tutoring options encompassing language learning, which a lot of people know Preply for, but also academic disciplines, professional skills, and hobbies. This is a catch-all for anybody who wants to become a tutor on Preply. So how has Preply changed over the years? Well, it has expanded the subject offerings. Um, it has become a truly global tutor network uh, that has tutors, students, and um, languages from all over the world. Um, enhanced tutor profiles, so different uh, features and functions of profiles, which we'll talk about today. Improved technology, flexible scheduling, mobile app development, which is a big thing um, that Preply has a kind of edge over other competitors in this area. Um, subscription packages, adaptive learning paths, and more. We hope that this 90-minute crash course will really condense um, you know, dozens and dozens of blog posts, of materials, of official resources um, on the Preply website and otherwise. Uh, so you could kind of cut right to the chase and get the information as effectively and efficiently as possible. Welcome to lesson number two, becoming a Preply teacher. You're gonna start by signing up. Uh, after that, you will wait for approval. It typically takes up to five business days to get approved, which is a huge advantage teachers on Preply have over uh, teachers on other platforms. Uh, Preply is a lot quicker with approving your um, application or at least reviewing your application than other platforms are. With that being said, keep in mind that there are human beings that are reviewing your application. So so it will take as as short as five business days to get approved. You'll set up an account. We'll talk all about that today. We'll talk about po polishing up your profile, preparing for your first class and teaching and not just teaching your first class. But again, this course is for teachers who want to really like up skill, who want to improve their craft and uh, take it to the next level. So applying to Preply, first you're gonna to register to teach. You'll go to preply.com, click on become a tutor. Um, we at Teach Ahead actually have a live stream uh, set up where you could actually look at all of this from the tutor's perspective. Uh, you could see the whole kind of platform from a uh, Preply teacher's uh, view. So if you're interested in that, definitely check the, uh, the link down below. So after you register to teach, uh, you'll go to preply.com, be, become a tutor, sign up with email, Facebook, or Google. Um, then you'll move on to the uh, virtual experience. Uh, you must meet the profile age, subject demand, and location requirements. Um, certain locations um, are restricted due to regulation. So depending on which country you're from, you may not be allowed to teach on Preply. Um, again, we have links to that information below as well. Um, application review. So your application uh, will be reviewed within five business days, notification email about the application status. And when you're filling out your application, you will complete eight different sections. If any of these sections are incorrect, you're not going to be approved. It's pretty simple. Um, it's quite easy to get accepted onto Preply, but um, if you, especially the profile picture or the video, if you don't have that, then that could be a roadblock to getting accepted. 
Um, you need to add your certifications, like your resume, your education credentials, uh, write an engaging profile description, record an intro video following the guidelines, set availability and time zone in the calendar, and choose your tutoring rate. You're the one who chooses your rate. You're the one who creates your resources. You're the one who uh, sets up your calendar. It's all you. Remember that Preply is not your employer. You are self-employed. You are freelancing it when you're on the platform. Preply is a marketplace. Preply is a meeting ground between you and students, right? So that's an important thing to know. Uh, no classes are guaranteed. Um, a lot of it comes down to your skills, uh, the demand for your te teaching ability or your service. And of course, uh, how you market yourself. So we'll talk about different ways to market yourself today as well. Recording your video. So this is one of the big things that uh, Preply teachers um, nervous about or anxious about, understandably. For some of you, it is a very daunting experience to think about even just being in front of a screen with a student for 60 minutes or 90 minutes. And it feels very vulnerable to have that one-on-one -on -one kind of interaction on a computer, especially if you're not used to using technology as an educator, or if uh, you're not used to having one-on-one -on -one lessons. So when we're talking about your video, we're talking about condensing everything you are as an educator into one to two minutes. That could be a little bit daunting. Let's help you out. You're going to start by introducing yourself in 15 to 20 seconds. State your first name, mention your origin and current location, uh, specify what you teach, list the languages you speak. Um, you're then going to come over to focusing on your skills. So 30 to 50 seconds, you'll share your qualifications, experience, relevant skills, uh, describe what students can expect in your lessons, mention your teaching methods and preferred materials, and highlight your specialties. Uh, for example, business English, exam preparation, and more. And finally, at the end, 15 to 25 seconds, you're going to encourage students to book a lesson with you. If you want some different prompts or like, uh, quotes that you could use and incorporate into your video or even into your profile description. Teach Ahead has lists of these all for free, so we'll put the links down below. Uh, thank your students for watching and include a motivational message. Uh, you know, uh, looking forward to seeing you in class, that kind of thing. You're also going to post a profile picture and you need to make sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's because this is one of the most common areas uh, for rejection from Preply when you apply to Preply. So you need to make sure that you are visible. Your face and eyes have to be fully visible, um, it, exceptions for religious reasons. Uh, centering your photo should be centered upright. Uh, the, use a color quality with high resolution and no filters. Uh, choose neutral lighting and a plain background. Uh, smile and look into the camera as if greeting students for the first time. Um, some potential issues with your profile picture could be photos with logos, contact information, right? Like Preply doesn't really, really want you taking the students off the platform because then that could be enticing to kind of work out parking lot deals or um, under the table deals where you're accepting payments outside of Preply. Obviously, Preply charges a commission and we'll talk about that in a moment. So uh, Preply wants you to keep the students on the platform, right? To communicate with them through the inbox, etc. Images should, um, should not feature people other than the tutor. Uh, photos uh, should not have borders, frames. They should not be black and white. They should not be blurry or heavily edited. Uh, you should not wear hats, sunglasses, or masks. Uh, photos with animals or crop photos aren't um, accepted. Uh, head to waist photos are not accepted. So basically, you know, um, you're expected to follow a set of guidelines when you uh, sign up. And you need to remember that the first thing the student sees is your face it, or your photo, right? Um, and that's the first thing that Preply sees when the Preply team reviews your profile, right? So this could make or break your profile. It could uh, have it be approved or denied. So make sure that you uh, take that seriously right there. And remember that you could always change your Preply 
profile photo in the future as well. Same with your video, same with your profile description. And in fact, it is recommended that you are intermittently updating these things as you develop as a teacher. All right, everyone, welcome to lesson number three, getting started on Preply. So after you get accepted by the Preply uh, platform, you want to edit your profile. You want to touch it up a little bit to make it even better. And you don't have to do this. Uh, if you really put your full effort into the application and you feel like you've kind of included everything you need to include, then by all means, keep it like that for a while. But this is a good practice, a positive practice for Preply tutors, even for very seasoned, experienced Preply tutors who have been on the platform for years. Um, there are six main sections to your Preply profile. The about to you section, the photo, the description, the video, the subjects, and your background, all right? The following features need to be reviewed by Preply. So if you try to change these things, the Preply team needs to review and approve them. So they won't be updated automatically. You'll need to wait, okay? So those are things like your photo, video intro, profile headline, profile description, subjects, and certificates. So it's recommended that you take the application process seriously and that you do try to put your best foot forward. Uh, that way you won't find yourself, you know, accepted to the platform, but wait, nobody's booking lessons with me because my profile needs a little bit of touching up, right? Um, it is human and natural and normal for you to be in the position right now where you're like, I just want to get my foot in the door, Ryan. I just want to get started. I'm going to like just provide the bare minimum to get approved and then we'll cross that bridge when, when we come to it, right? That totally makes sense, right? But this is just a recommendation. Uh, try to include as much as possible in the application so that you not only get it approved, but your profile is bam, right up there on the platform and, you know, at a, a higher quality. So it will be attracting students. Now, these features do not need to be reviewed by Preply. So they will automatically, like if you change these elements of your profile, they'll automatically be updated. Phone number, hourly rate. So remember, you set your rate. It's all your choice. But at the same time, Preply does not guarantee you any students or any classes. You, you need to uh, really appeal to the students. Um, time zone, preferred student age, preferred level of students, and educational background. So those things you could update and it, it doesn't take time for those to be um, approved by Preply. Okay, let's talk about your profile description. So here are a few recommendations. Just be friendly and approachable. Regardless of whether you're trying to teach, you know, academic English or if you're trying to teach psychology or if you're trying to teach art, I mean, be friendly, be approachable, um, share inter interesting personal details, uh, use paragraphs and bullet points for readability, um, and double check spelling and grammar. So dues, um, make sure you mention your qualifications, your work experience, and, and student focus. Um, explain teaching methods and lesson structure. Include personality and hobbies. Keep it engaging and authentic and write in one language. Do not include your surname or contact details. Don't add links to personal websites or social media. Write in, don't write in the third person or copy CV uh, content. And don't invite students for free lessons or include reviews. There are not no free lessons on Preply. Um, if you need any help with these things, with setting up your profile, with the, setting up a profile description or a video, Make sure you join our language teacher community where we have teachers engaging and sharing tips and information and resources. And we do also have services at Teach Ahead, which could help you out with um, making sure you put your best foot forward as a new online language uh, tutor. All right, subjects now. So the different subjects you could teach on Preply, well, you would select student proficiency level, you could choose your preferred age group, and you could pick subject areas and write short descriptions for each sub subject area that you offer, that you teach. 
Uh, you need to write in the same language as your Preply profile. You need to avoid copying and pasting. Try to create unique descriptions for each subject. Yeah, ensure descriptions are relevant to selected preferences. Do not share contact information. Upload verified certificates for special education subjects like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, or untick these areas if unverified, okay? Um, finding students. So once your profile is visible, students can view message or book lessons. Um, this is influenced by your profile details, your hourly rate and availability. Like if your minimum rate is higher than the rate that students are willing to pay, quite simply, you're never going to show up on their feed, right? So um, you are putting down the, the service and what you expect to be compensated for with this service, and they are putting down what they, ex what they are looking for in the service. Um, Put down your specialties. Don't undersell yourself. Uh, definitely make sure that you put down every single skill, experience, qualification that you have, even if it seems ab abstract, just like with any resume. Find a way to link it. Find a way to connect it. Find a way to make it relevant. All right. Um, put down your languages spoken, even if you speak certain languages at a lower level. And put down your availability. Fill in profile details thoroughly. Adjust your hourly rate, increase your availability. That is strongly recommended. Um, and invest time in your profile. Um, this can increase booking. So again, you could do this for free by going online and engaging and interacting with other language teachers around the world, online language teachers, or there are services out there for you as well. So lesson booking settings. Um, you could put down your advance notice so you could set how soon in advance students can book a trial lesson with you that a trial lesson is a first lesson right um the booking window so you could determine how far into the future students can book lessons a four-week booking window is recommended due to monthly subscription so some students are on a for on preply for the month um so maybe Putting up your availability four, four weeks in advance could be a recommendation right there. Um, this doesn't affect weekly lessons, which are scheduled one week at a time. There's also a, an instant booking function, which you could use it if you wish. Uh, this allows students to book and pay for their first lesson immediately without sending a request. So if you don't have instant booking enabled, then students have to request a lesson. You will have the lesson come to you as the tutor. You will review the profile. You will review the lesson type and you will think, yes, I want to take on this student or no, I don't want to. Right. Um, so having this automatic instant booking might give you a little bit of a boost. Um, this applies to all available time slots in the Preply calendar, and this feature is always on and cannot be turned off. Uh, managing your calendar. So um, this can be done in the Preply app or on the browser. All right. Um, this can be synced with your Google calendar, which is very convenient. Uh, you can schedule one-off availability or recurring availability. You can reschedule and cancel book lessons if you wish, uh, 12 hours in advance at the very minimum. Um, if it's any less than that, then you're on the hook for teaching that lesson. Your student is on the hook for coming to that lesson. If you're still not able to make it, uh, that's a real shade of gray, but um, you would have to sort that out with the student um, on your own as to how you negotiate what the result is there. Um, you can choose to reschedule a lesson or request payment for absences. So if your student doesn't show up, um, you could negotiate with them or like it could, it's discretionary really, um, but you are entitled to the funds from that lesson. So you are within your right, according to the terms of service, uh, to actually request a payment, right? And if there are any disputes, then Preply deals with these disputes, right? If you don't come to uh, the class, your student could use their discretion whether they uh, report you not coming to the class or whether they 
state that uh, the class has been like rescheduled ahead of. All right, everyone, welcome to lesson number four, preparing for class. So you've been accepted to Preply, you've set up your profile, you have kind of tweaked your profile a little bit to make it more pretty. Now you need to prepare for your first class. Or maybe if you're in this course, you are preparing for your 10th or 100th or 200th class, right? Again, this course is not just for beginners, it's also for people who want a uh, kind of like to shake off the rust and want a uh, refresher with Preply. Um, so let's talk about how to prepare for class. So if it's your first lesson, these are a few of the goals that you may have going into this trial lesson. Ensure teaching style, learning style compatibility. All right. So that means your style as a teacher, that could be the way you assess your students, how often you assess your students, which materials you use to assess your students, how you manage the classroom, your in-class policies, your expectations, your um, could be like even late policy. Um, it could be your communicative style. So how often do you kind of interrupt your student? Is it okay to interrupt your student or should you wait for them to finish speaking before you give them feedback? All of those things in a nutshell, those come into your teaching style. And on the other side, for the learner, their preferences um, are incorporated into their learning style, right? Sometimes students will not read book with you and it's not because you did anything wrong. It's just the style, right? The style is not right and the vibes just aren't there, right? So don't take it personally and don't put too much pressure on securing rebookings with every single student. So the suggestion is that you put your best foot forward and you try in terms of being the best teacher you can be and being your authentic teaching self. But to remember that sometimes it's not you and it's not them, but it's just the pieces of the puzzle aren't uh, fitting, right? Um, clearly communicate the learning plan. So after you kind of assess their skills and understand their objectives for the future, create a little bit of a learning plan. And this could be something that you create with a digital resource together collaboratively, or it could be something very informal, like just asking them how often they want to have classes, which days they want to have classes on. Um, it depends on how much of the class you want to spend talking and really working on their language use or on their subject knowledge um, versus because um, there's the potential that you could also just talk about these things um, via message after the class or before the class. Um, so every teacher is different. You could reach out to the student beforehand and maybe you even have a suggested learning plan for them uh, before class even starts. Uh, maybe you won't even discuss the learning plan with them until after the class is done and maybe you'll send them um, a suggested learning plan. Again, it could be loosey-goosey or it could be very, very stringent and structured depending on your teaching style. Okay. Um, establish your learning objectives um, or the student's learning objectives. So I suppose your teaching objectives in this case. Um, make sure that they are smart. Uh, make sure that they're specific, they're measurable, uh, they're attainable. Um, and assess the language competencies or the subject matter competencies if you're tutoring in science or in math or something like that. Right? When you conduct your trial lesson, Start off by greeting your students. Um, send a reminder 15 minutes before the class starts, just as a little reminder. Um, a day or two days or a week before, you could even send them a greeting, just introducing yourself. Um, a lot of the teachers at Teach Ahead use a, um, an introduction template, which is downloadable for free, where you could actually introduce yourself to the student um, with your uh, teaching philosophy um, and give some details about your class. So maybe a f it's just an extra supplementary resource in addition to what you have on your profile. But most of the time, what you have on your profile is absolutely, it's more than enough, right? So don't feel pressured to overdo it. 
Um, th these, uh, this is one of those things that could come with more experience as an online tutor. Ensure that the sound quality is good and engage in small talk with the student when they, um, when they come to the class. Um, introduction, ask about online class experience, the goals, the uh, previous tests. Um, there is an evaluation test that you could do with the student. So there are a few kind of um, templates of uh, evaluation tests. Um, so this is a 15 to 20 minute test that you could walk the students through if you're teaching them English, for example. Um, but a lot of Preply tutors and a lot of Preply students just want to chat. They just want to get to know you and get to know your teaching style and get and communicate their objectives and see if you could help them. Um, so keep in mind that what you have on your profile and what the learner has on their learning profile sometimes won't cover all of the bases. Sometimes just meeting up and actually having a 30, 45, 60 minute like interaction, that's where you really answer and ask the question. So um, go into the class with an open mind. Don't make too many assumptions and be flexible for change because as I said, sometimes what they have on their learning profile it isn't reflected in what they actually want. Um, especially, especially with language learners, their objectives could change by the day. Um, explain the student's level, emphasize strengths, um, and then present the lesson plan. So outline expectations and hours needed uh, for the milestones. Um, converting to lesson package. So in converting the first lesson to rebookings, um, you would want to complete an academic lesson in 45 minutes, uh, discuss the next lesson and suggest a specific package, give homework if time permits, all right? Um, we at Teach Ahead use homework a lot of the time. Um, some students want homework, other students don't. You absolutely do not have to offer homework depending on the type of lessons and subjects you provide, right? Um, but giving your students the option for homework could really set you apart from other tutors. And that's what we're going to talk about more in the next module. So we suggest that you consult our um, resources where we have home trial lesson homework tasks uh, for different subjects, um, proficiency levels, and student ages. Um, and then follow up. After you finish the class, send them a follow-up message if no lessons are purchased yet, and send them a thank you message if a package is purchased. Honestly, as we said before, don't force it. Don't pressure your students because sometimes a student's objectives and needs and style won't gel with what you could offer them. But sometimes your students will refer a friend or a family member to take class with you, okay? So even if they don't rebook with you, they could actually refer a friend. And sometimes Preply students will actually take lessons on Preply with you to try, like as a tryout to see what you're like in order for their husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend to book a lesson with you. So that is something to keep in mind as well, that there are these other kind of like hidden, not so obvious opportunities out there if you keep an open mind. So questions that you may be asked by the student, um, you may be asked, can you tell me about your teaching experience? What teaching methods do you use? How do you structure your lessons? Uh, what materials do you use in your lessons? Can you help me? Um, can you explain your approach to grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation if this is a language lesson? How do you assess your students' progress? Do you provide homework or assignments? A lot of these questions might even be asked by other stakeholders. So they could be asked by parents if the parents are booking lessons for their child. So in the trial lesson, they may have their child there and the parents may be there as well, ready to ask you a few questions at the end. Um, 
they could ask you, what are your expectations for me as a student? How do you handle missed or canceled lessons? Can you accommodate my learning preferences? How do you deal with students who struggle to understand a concept? Can you customize lessons to focus on my specific goals? Do you provide feedback after each lesson? How do you ensure that the learning environment is engaging? What makes your teaching style unique or effective? So I know what you're thinking. You're probably looking at these questions thinking, wow, that is very articulate from these uh, students. And yes, granted, a lot of students on Preply won't frame questions quite like this. Um, this is a very high level of actualization and uh, kind of um, um, awareness from students. So some students are very kind of aware of their learning needs, and they will ask you these kinds of questions, either in text form or orally. Um, but some students will kind of paraphrase these questions or ask them implicitly. And even if they don't ask these questions, it shows your level of professionalism if you could beat them to the punch and answer these questions in advance. So again, this all depends on your style. Some of you will jump right into conversation and you'll just have conversation the whole way through the class. Some, some of you will have a structured lesson plan for the first lesson. Some of you will conduct a test. Uh, some of you will talk about the learning plan right from the get-go. To each their own, right? Um, that's what makes Preply special. But being able to answer these questions could give you an edge over other uh, tutors. Now, here are some questions that you may ask your students. So, What's your name? You're probably gonna know what their name is, how old they are by looking at their profile. But again, sometimes Preply will throw you curveballs, and we at Teach Ahead would like for you to take this in stride rather than kind of uh, seeing this as a daunting possibility. Sometimes they'll throw you curveballs, and the profile will be an adult, but that's because it's the parent of the child that they're booking the lessons for. Um, again, adults do learn on Preply as well. There are a lot of adults too, but th this is a possibility. Yeah, so have you studied English before or psychology before or science be before? Where else do you study these subjects, right? What are your specific learning goals? Uh, do you have any specific areas of the subject that you would like to focus on? Um, how comfortable are you in this subject? Uh, speaking English, for example, what are the challenges? Do you how do you prefer to learn new things? Do you enjoy watching English movies or TV shows or whichever kind of materials or modality of mo materials for that given subject you teach? What topics or subjects do you like to talk about? Have you ever used online learning platforms before? This is a big one. How would you like our English lessons or subject lessons to be structured? And do you have any questions or concerned, uh, concerns about our lesson? So the Preply Classroom. Uh, there is an official Preply Classroom where you will conduct your lessons through. This is a video conferencing tool which is free for you to use. Um, over the next few slides we're going to be looking at a few of the unique features of this classroom. And again if you want to see a walkthrough from the tutor's perspective you can always watch our live stream at Teach Ahead. So lesson activities, there's an interactive tool with suggested timings um, and it's flexible to adapt to each student's needs. Uh, there are messages so you can message the students while they're talking. Uh, so you could use the chat for communication. You could upload files to the chat. Um, they save in the notes or you could push vocabulary from chat to flashcards. Um, you could take notes. Um, so this could be useful for uh, creating a learning report for feedback. Uh, there's structured feedback, error correction, new vocabulary, um, grammar, homework, and objectives. So all of these suggestions or suggested materials are baked into the platform. So as you are teaching and as you are exchanging messages, Preply could automatically through the classroom like generate these suggest suggested grammar activities, suggested homework, etc. Um, the problem is that you know, the machine does not always pick up what the best kind of 
materials are for specific students. So that's why we also have materials at Teach Ahead, which any online language teachers could use. Um, the, there is a vocabulary flashcard tool which uses space repetition. It adds words automatically or manually. Uh, you could practice via matching or listening exercises. So these exercises are created automatically with the help of AI. Um, there's a speaking timer if you want to do some speaking activities with your students. For example, if you're helping to prepare them for an English proficiency test um, like IELTS or TOEFL, or if it's a French proficiency test like DELF, or if it's a Spanish proficiency test like DELE, uh, you could use the speaking timer. Uh, this analyzes and shows speaking activity statistics. There is an interactive whiteboard you could use collaboratively with the student. Uh, this is a dynamic interactive tool for real-time collaboration. You could share images, draw and present content. This could be very useful, especially with um, children or college students if you are helping them with uh, making presentations, right? Um, or even if you're teaching business. Um, there is a lesson insights tool, um, which includes summaries, suggested feedback, speaking time, and vocabulary tracking. All of this is generated with AI. Yeah, it's there in a flash. And there's a library, a resource library that you can use for free. Um, you can access Preply's learning materials. This is in the earlier stages, but it is developing. Um, and especially for English teachers or Spanish teachers, there are, th there's lots of content there for you. So the Preply Classroom is accessed through the Preply Classroom Library. Um, it's an AI-powered trial lesson topic selector. So if you're out of ideas of what to talk about, there it, it could generate random topics for you. There is an AI-powered lesson insights tool, uh, student course creator. So if you want an entire course based on the proficiency level, the age, the nationality of the student, and maybe their interests as well, uh, the Preply Classroom could generate that for you. There's, as we said, a vocabulary extension tool, lesson materials for English lessons, and this includes conversation starters, grammar reference courses, general English and business English. Again, we at Teach Ahead have these kinds of materials as well, which are, which are more streamlined, focused, concerted, and specific based on our hundreds, thousands of hours of experience as online language teachers. Um, but it's great that these materials are there for you in the Preply Classroom Library for free. Lesson planning with uh, Preply. So when you want to create a learning plan, you could actually just come on over here to the lesson. You can open the the learning plan and you can actually see like a rundown of the different lessons that you have taught the student before um, with the uh, different kind of summaries and lesson insights and that could help you to decide how you would like to move forward in your classes. Now um, as you head into the first lesson, you should be aware of the terms of service, the rules and regulations, the rights and responsibilities on the platform. For you as a teacher, one of the big questions will be, what if I miss a lesson? Because that's kind of the mother of all em emergencies right there. Um, so you are expected to be professional. Tutors should attend scheduled lessons on time, especially trial lessons. and. No matter how well your trial lesson goes, this could be unforgivable from the perspective of your student. At the same time, some students are completely understanding about this and they themselves uh, tend to come to class late. So it, it really depends on your teaching style, their learning style. Now, what is the impact of missing lessons? Well, students can report miss, miss trials uh, that negatively impacts your statistics and that will then negatively impact the algorithm and how often you are shown to students, uh, prospective students. 
Uh, tutor profiles are hidden from new students after missed trials. Uh, tutors can continue with current students. Repeated missed trials result in increasing profile hiding times and eventual per permanent suspension after five missed trials. So basically you're put on timeout um, after you miss a trial lesson. And if you miss five trial lessons, then uh, you're off the platform. For each mistrial, uh, so for the first one, you will um, have your profile hidden until you have watched a tutorial video on attending lessons. Um, after that, for the second time, your profile will be hidden for seven days and until attendance course is completed. Um, number three, your profile will be hidden for 14 days. Number four, 30 days. And number five, it's blocked. All right, so five strikes and you're out. Um, when there are dispute errors, you would contact Preply support for investigation. So if a student says that you didn't show up to the lesson and you said a student didn't show up to a lesson, these disputes are handled through Preply. Um, so avoiding missed lessons, basically the main tips right here, adjust your booking windows, uh, keep your calendar updated, use the Preply app for notifications. Reschedule or cancel promptly in case of emergencies. It really is the same tips as we would have for any discussion about promptness and about professionalism, right? Don't let it happen, but mistakes do happen and emergencies do happen. And if you have anything going on in life that is so crucial that you need to miss your lesson, it's probably worth it to miss the lesson um, on that given um, occasion, right? Again, for the first time, your profile is hidden until the tutorial is watched. A lot of students are understanding about this, but not all the time, right? So it's a best practice to try to avoid these uh, last minute changes. All right, everyone, welcome to lesson number five, setting yourself apart. So we've spoken about applying to the platform, getting on the platform, editing your profile, making it look pretty, teaching your first class. Now, how do you make Preply a long-term successful endeavor as a language teacher? Let's talk about it right here. How do you set yourself apart from the thousands of other teachers on the platform? Okay, so first of all, understand some of the functions that Preply offers and use some of the resources that Preply offers. Now, the first one is potential students. You can identify potential students in the following ways. First of all, favorites. Students could add you to their favorite tutors list. So imagine a student joins Preply and they're just kind of like glossing over pages and pages of tutors that match up with their um, objectives and their proficiency level. Um, and they're favoriting potential teachers. You could access, um, you could see who has favorited your profile. Um, an incomplete booking. So sometimes students will start booking a lesson with you, but they will not complete the trial lesson booking. You could see that as well. And then you could reach out to the student to say, hey, not sure if you need a hand with booking a lesson, because sometimes students will get like cold feet because it is scary for a lot of students. If you are teaching them English or Spanish or Italian, you are the first fully proficient speaker of that language that they have ever met. It's true. A lot of t students have told me, Ryan, you're the first like first language English speaker I have ever met. Um, it could be very daunting and very kind of um, scary for them to go into a 60 minute lesson where they feel like they're trapped in this box uh, with you, right? So some students will overthink this. Some students will get a little bit worried and a little bit anxious, just like some of you will feel those uh, feelings as well, right? Um, just like any first day of class or first day of school, first day of work, you, you get, get over it and you get that experience as time goes on, right? So um, if students get cold feet or if they get a little bit worried and they don't complete the booking or if this just happens by accident, you, you could be there to uh, reassure them with a message. 
Now, the importance of responding to students. Um, so whenever a student sends you a message, um, even if it's before the trial lesson, um, it's important to respond to them because it builds trust. It shows professionalism. It increases trial bookings. Data shows responding to favorites increases chances by 50, uh, by times 50. <laughs> um, incom and incomplete bookings times 20. And 35 if it's within the first 10 minutes. So this is a big thing right here. Um, if a student starts to book a lesson with you and you send them a message to say, hey, um, my name's Ryan, nice to meet you. If you need a hand, uh, just let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help. That could be the difference maker right there. Now, how to respond, reply quickly. It really shows enthusiasm. It shows promptness. It shows accountability. It shows professionalism personalize it so instead of just giving them like generic responses you know like you could even note uh, take note of a couple things in their profile their hobbies their interests and maybe let them know by the way i have some i have an activity that i think you would really like that we could do in class um use a friendly ch friendly tone so instead of making it too formal or too kind of um um, intimidating in that way, you could be a bit more friendly. It encourages engagement, offers support, um, highlight experience, um, make a call to action so you can encourage a trial booking, um, you know, um, gently encourage, encourage a trial booking. Um, favorites, introduce yourself, ask about their goals, suggest a trial lesson, and for an incomplete booking, offer help with booking issues, suggest additional time slots, right? So you could even ask them, did, like, did you not book the lesson because it's not compatible with your schedule? If so, I do have more availability next week, so we could find a time that works, right? Now, how do you promote your profile? Well, part of setting yourself apart from other tutors, from the thousands of other tutors, and making this a long-term successful endeavor, it's about putting your name out there and being visible, being seen. Um, and by promoting your profile, you can do this. So there are four ways that you could promote your profile. You can do this through social media, like Instagram, LinkedIn, you could even like have a business profile that's called like, you know, um, Preply Ryan or Preply Jessica or, or something like that with your last name as well. Um, that way students will know that you teach on Preply. Um, your video introduction on Preply, right? So Preply itself is a massive, it's a powerful uh, source and search engine because there are hundreds of thousands, millions of students who have taken lessons, right? So using the actual data, the, the um, marketplace, the platform to your advantage is one of the biggest recommendations we could give you, right? Make sure you are touching up your profile and then touching it up again. Forums and Q and A's, right? So there are many forums, useful forums on Reddit, on uh, Teach Ahead, as we said before, where you could interact and engage with other Preply tutors. Uh, you could join a Facebook group, for example. And your own blog, you could create a blog or create a vlog, and this could be a way for students to find you. Um, this is how a lot of students have found me, and a lot of students have found other teachers at Teach Ahead. And that brings us to this final option, number five. Um, we actually have a recommended teacher's uh, directory on Teach Ahead for English teachers, Spanish teachers, any language teachers. This is only open to graduates of our 120-hour TESOL certificate program. Um, but if you have taken that program and you're here right now, you're in luck if you have um, performed exceptionally well in the program, you could fill out a little application and we will consider adding you to our uh, directory. That way, when students come to learn ahead to take courses or to consult uh, our free resources, they may stumble upon your profile and actually think, oh, hey, I'm going to reach out and uh, book a lesson with them. So, 
Again, all that we provide through this directory is basically your contact information, your picture, your video, and a little description about your teaching capabilities. Everything that comes down to, you know, booking the lesson and carrying out the lesson is solely between you and the student. But this hopefully could give a little bit of a boost to teachers who are new to online teaching or who are a little bit intimidated. And we are open to non-native speaking teachers as well. Um, we actually celebrate that. So again, you have nothing to lose by having your profile on the directory. And best of all, if it's on the directory, it's because you have shown an exceptional willingness to apply concepts and build your knowledge through our very intensive, very thorough ELT 1010 TESOL cert certificate. So that's uh, for, the, um, for the loyal members of Teach Ahead right there. Creating a teacher philosophy. This is something that you can send to your students in a PDF um, form before your trial lesson, or uh, you could send it to students who have an incomplete booking or who have favorited your profile. Um, this is also something that you could kind of copy and paste and put into your Preply profile. Um, your teacher philosophy could respond to the following questions. Like, what is your approach to language teaching? How do you engage and motivate students? How do you incorporate cultural elements into your lessons? Do you or not? Why? What type of classroom environment do you strive to create? Um, how do you assess and provide feedback to students? How do you integrate technology into your teaching? And that's what Teach Ahead actually specializes in, educational technology, uh, the uh, effective and e efficient use of it. How do you address diverse learning needs? What is your philosophy on professional development? So how are you trying to improve as a teacher? Uh, you'd be surprised how, how important this is to students. What theories of language acquisition influence your teaching and how do you foster collaboration among students? Uh, feel free to join ELT 2060, Creating a Language Teacher Philosophy, if you are a language teacher and trying to, um, trying to create one of these philosophies. So best practices, these are not necessarily rules, but these are things that we strongly recommend you do to give yourselves the best chance of raising your rate, making more money, uh, finding more students, getting more rebookings with students, which is really your bread and butter, right? Like the long-term students. Um, remember, 90% of your lessons will probably be with 10% of the students. Again, 90% of your lessons on Preply will probably be with 10% of the students. Your long-term students are the ones who are there with you through thick and thin. Um, we at Teach Ahead still have some te uh, some students from the beginning of COVID, right? Um, so these best practices could really be what sets you apart from others. Understand the language you teach or the subject you teach and how to, to learn it or how to teach it. Employ corrective feedback techniques. Uh, we have a course on this. It's free, actually. Um, specialize in a niche area. Personalize lessons to individual student needs. Implement innovative teaching methods, especially like the flipped classroom method and methods you use um, with educational technology. Um, cultivate cultural sensitivity. Commit to continuous professional development and make sure that you are also adding this PD to your resume, right? Um, and with the professional development, consult the resources that Prevly has. Maintain honesty and clarity with your students. Keep students engaged and motivated. Keep things interesting. Um, we strongly suggest that you have a progress report or you issue some sort of, yeah, like report card every 10, 20, or 30 lessons just to make sure that you are keeping the learning objectives in the learning plan in mind. Um, demonstrate professionalism and reliability. So even if you do miss a class or, or something like that, like worst case scenario, if you miss a class or if you're late for a class, which is not good either, some students, you're lucky, will be accepting of that. Maybe you could redeem yourself, right? So 
If that happens, make sure that you're there for, for the next however many lessons. Build rapport, positive teacher-student relationships. Make things fair, right? Um, again, if any of these emergencies happen, uh, like come to class late or something like that, make sure that you're more understanding with the student about that as well. It's a two-way street. Getting an edge as an educator. So what we're going to do is walk you through 10 different kind of sides of being a good teacher versus being a great preply teacher. So to be a good teacher, you could follow a lesson plan with objectives, but to be a great teacher, you would customize the lesson plans to this, these individual student needs. All right. Some of you will be following the curricula or the kind of state guidelines for different um, districts and different provinces, right? Um, if you're doing that, then your objectives may be a little bit more generic and streamlined to those to the rubrics to the criteria from those kind of uh, from those um official documents for the region where you live um but if you're just doing kind of one-on-one -on -one tutoring and you're creating your own kind of uh type of pedagogy and education then definitely have some fun with it and make it adaptable a good teacher would provide explanations using simple language. A great teacher would use a variety of teaching methods to explain complex concepts. And when one method doesn't work, you might come to the next lesson trying a different method. A good teacher would offer feedback on student performance. A great teacher would provide detailed, constructive feedback with actionable suggestions. Of course, you're only getting paid so much, and a lot of what you're making is going towards the commission rate, which we'll talk about after. So you don't want to spread yourself too thin and you don't want to do more than what you're getting compensated for. So this depends on how high your rate is and what your cost of living is and all of those other things, right? But this could uh, kind of like distinguish you from the rest. Um, use on a good teacher would use online resources such as videos and quizzes. A great teacher would uh, curate personalized learning materials. Even if you use AI to do this and different AI tools, we have tutorials for this on our YouTube channel. Um, a good teacher would respond promptly to student inquiries. Um, a great teacher would initiate regular check-ins to assess student progress and address uh, concerns proactively. So not only responding or being reactive, but being proactive with these things could really show an awareness for teaching. And this just comes with experience. Also, a way to ensure that the student feels heard and that their needs are being met could be by just having like once every five or 10 or 15 lessons in the last five minutes to have just a check in on how they feel like things are going or to uh, issue like feedback reports to them. A good teacher would encourage student participation. A great one would foster a supportive and motivating learning environment, promoting active student engagement. A good teacher would assess student comprehension through quizzes and assignments, but a great one would employ innovative assessment methods to gauge student understanding and skill development. And just a little word on quizzes and assignments or like worksheets. Ensure that you're not doing this just to kill class time. Don't do this just to kind of burn through the 45 or 60 minutes if you want to be seen as a great teacher. Um, this might be might be perfectly fine with the student um, and this might be more akin to what the student is used to learning, uh, like the method they're used to learning through um, in their home country. Um, but if you feel within yourself that what you are doing is you know, just wasting time, then in order to ensure the maximum potential from your pedagogy, you may want to use worksheets, use assignments, use quizzes, but take it up a notch, right? And try to push the envelope so that you could get the very best out of your student. And of course, so that you could find the gaps, the areas for you to improve or for your student to improve with your help. 
A good teacher maintains a professional and respectful demeanor, whereas a great one uh, demonstrates empathy, patience, and cultural sensitivity in all interactions. A good one continually improves teaching skills through PD. A great one actively seeks feedback from students and peers to refine uh, teaching practices and enhance learning outcomes. Now, of course, when we talk about peers, one of the down drawbacks of Preply is that a lot of teachers feel a little bit isolated because they don't feel like they have a lot of, they have colleagues that they could kind of network with and talk to because they're teaching these online or group lessons only with students. And they don't have these water cooler moments where they get to, you know, chat uh, or vent uh, with, with other like-minded uh, professionals. Um, so that's why it's important to join a community of practice either through Preply or through Teach Ahead. Um, yeah, and a good teacher establishes clear communication through channels and expectations. Um, a great teacher cultivates strong relationships with students, offering mentorship, guidance beyond language learning or beyond learning in general. You could even offer your students, like your long-term students, to be a reference. Um, we, we at Teach Ahead do that for our students who have really be, been exceptional. Um, if the student applies to, like, applies for citizenship in a country, if they apply to work in a certain country, if they apply for a post-secondary program, then they might need a reference letter. And you, as their English teacher or whichever subject you're teaching, you could be that reference if you wish. So that's another thing that you could do um, as, you know, a way to show, to build even stronger rapport with your student. Understand your tutor profile statistics. The stats menu provides insights into your profile's performance. It impacts your ranking on the Find Tutors page. So the algorithm is going to, you know, showcase the best of the best. So you will be among the cream of the crop if you have positive stats. It includes sections on recommended actions, super tutor badge, yearly performance, and lifetime performance. Here are some key metrics in your statistics. Your conversion to trial, so the percentage of students booking a trial lesson with you. Um, profile views, so the number of views um, your profile gets. Um, booked trials, number of trial lessons booked. Um, conversion to students, so percentage of students continuing after a trial lesson, uh, otherwise known as rebookings, right? Your total net earnings, so the uh, the amount of money you have made on Preply, and this is not going to be um, visible to the students. And your average uh, review ratings, so the overall student ratings um, that you have received from the students who have taken your classes. One other way to set yourself apart from other Preply tutors is to become a super tutor. This is a tutor who's awarded for consistently impressive performance. You will get a badge on your profile. Um, there will be a super tutor filter for students and you will come up when they look for super tutors um, and exclusive corporate students um, through Preply's partnerships. So you could get more students by being a super tutor. The, the Benefits, increased trial booking, so there's a 15% higher chance, um, growth in business and earnings. Um, the criteria for becoming a super tutor, you need a conversion rate, 50% um, trial to subscription, um, no lesson absences, uh, minimum 40 lessons taught, average rating of 4.8 or more, so that's 4.8 out of 5 stars. 90% response rate within 24 hours, less than 5% trial cancellation rate, and less than 10% trial reschedule rate. So you, you're not necessarily doing anything wrong if you need to cancel or reschedule lessons, as long as you do it in due time. But um, all of these things kind of contribute to the overall performance of students. And Preply quite rightly knows that if students don't have the most the 
best ease of use, the best accessibility on your platform, the students will, or on Preply's platform, the students will go to a different platform, right? So they know that the more kind of secure certain, like um, the more um, th that they could expect of their teachers, the better, right? Um, a few tips, maximize your availability, clearly state teaching preferences, request reviews from your students. So let your students know at the end of classes, hey, no pressure, but I'd really appreciate it if you just like let me know what you liked about the class or what I could improve on. Um, time off function can avoid cancellation. So these are the big things. Avoid cancellations, try to avoid rescheduling. Create customizable response templates. Uh, download the Preply app for quick responses and reminders. All right, everyone, and away we go. Welcome to lesson number six, uh, common challenges as a Preply teacher. Let's dive in. So dealing with stakeholders, this could be a blessing or a curse. There's no question that it is a double-edged sword. When you are teaching on Preply, a lot of the time you're not just teaching one person, you're really teaching a team. And that means that the student that you are teaching, even though they're the one who attends class and everything focuses on their learning, they do have support from other sources. Here's one common one parents or guardians. If you are open to teaching children, especially younger children, guess what? A lot of the time, especially if their child does not have a lot of experience learning online, their parents may attend the first trial lesson. Sometimes their parents will actually like to attend consistently as you teach their, their child. It is your decision whether you want to facilitate that or not okay you are not expected to do that um as a preply tutor but it's your decision okay um otherwise if you're teaching a younger student but maybe they have more experienced learning on preply or if you're teaching a teenager the parents might take a little bit more of a hands-off approach they might, instead of attending or listening in or, or monitoring the class, they might just ask you a, a few questions every five or 10 lessons. They might send you a message through the inbox from the learner profile and just say, hi, Ryan, this is Gregory's mom. Um, it seems like everything's going well with his English classes, but I'd just like to know from your perspective, like, how is everything going? Is there anything we could do to support his learning at home? Um, I'd, I'd also like to let you know that we have uh, enrolled him in a spelling bee um, or he's uh, like he took an English test last week and he aced it. We're really happy with that. So the parents could kind of work with you. And that's what we mean by a team. They are a stakeholder. They have a vested interest in the learning of their child, um, just as you do. And you could work together. This is the double edged sword, right? At the same time, parents could absolutely sometimes be overbearing and they might have expectations that you just can't satisfy. They may have kind of learning styles or stakeholder styles that you might not be able to facilitate um, or match as a teacher with your teaching style because maybe you don't you feel that they are interrupting or interfering right so this is very contextual this is not something for you to shy away from or be scared of it's just something for you to be aware of right um so as you're sitting there right now um just think about what would your policy be on something like this and communicate your policy clearly if you encounter such a situation where a parent might be monitoring a class or a parent might be kind of like infringing upon uh, the uh, what you see as the their um, limits uh, to a friend infringe upon. Uh, number two, Preply. Of course, Preply is one of the stakeholders and you need to ensure that you are abiding by their policies and um, complying with their policies. Um, the learner has to do the same. Um, 
you are also expected to be professional. You're expected to attend classes, right? So Prepley will be a mediator in these situations. But remember, Prepley is just a marketplace, a platform that helps to put you into contact with students, right? Um, instead of you being floating in this big ocean uh, that we know as the internet, it gives structure. to it, it gives a funnel, it gives a channel where learners could meet teachers, right? So uh, Preply could also be um, a facilitator um, or depending on how you see it, it could also be uh, like, a, it could have different roadblocks, right? Such as the fact that there are so many other tutors that you need to compete with, right? Um, but that's just a reality. And number three, friends. Number three and number one really link up together closely. The reason why is because if you're teaching adults, but they have a very, very low level, especially if it's a, a language like Spanish or English or French, they will sometimes get a friend, a family member, or a loved one, like um, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, who is more proficient than them to kind of speak on their behalf. So in the very first lesson, the trial lesson, sometimes their friend will come in at the last in the last five minutes or in the first five minutes just to kind of introduce the friend who will be taking lessons, right? And to let you know that they are here if like as a source of support. Sometimes this second friend will monitor the lessons and sit in. Sometimes they will send you a message every like few lessons just to say, hey, um, I'm Anna's friend, uh, Yaroslav, you met me a few classes ago. I, I just want to know how Anna's doing because since Anna is such a at such a low level, she might not feel comfortable or confident like um, vouching on her behalf or kind of expressing herself and communicating her needs. That's a possibility. Other times, a friend or a loved one will actually take the trial lesson with you to try out your teaching. And then if they like your teaching and think that it's going to be a right fit for the less proficient friend, they will refer the less proficient friend. So I have had many, many couples take lessons with me where like the f first it's just the husband uh, attends the first lesson. And initially the plan is for the husband to take the lesson, to try it out, to see if I would be a good teacher for the wife. But then when the husband takes the lesson with me, he realizes, oh, wow, I actually really like Ryan's teaching style too. So then I end up having lessons with the husband and lessons with the, with the wife, right? So that's a possibility too. We spoke about this earlier. Be open-minded. This might be something that you appreciate doing. This might be something that you find to be just, it complicates things and it makes things like mucky and messy. Um, remember, these are supposed to be one-on-one -on -one classes. You're supposed to only be teaching one student per profile. So if you prefer to keep things a little bit neater like that, you could always clearly communicate and express what your expectations are as a teacher. You could reach out to the to the learner profile and say, hi, with all due respect, I'd like to only communicate with Anna. Or same with, with number one, with the parents and guardians, you, would, you could say, I would like to only teach and communicate with Gregory. I, I don't want to be, you know, communicating with parents as well or having parents sit in on the, on the meetings. You are within your right right there. Here are some challenges of teaching on Preply. Um, student attendance and commitment. So there are frequent cancellations and rescheduling by students. And some teachers might find this to be a headache and they might find even though they end up getting, like the teacher ends up getting the money from the missed lesson, if the student is not refunded for the missed lesson. Sometimes the student is not happy about that. So the student will not rebook with the teacher for that reason. So even though the teacher got the money from this missed lesson that the student missed, 
they are losing the potential of the student rebooking because so this could lead to some misunderstandings you know it's it's just part of the business number two re, uh, scheduling and time zone differences so coordinating lessons across ver various time zones of course Preply's calendar links up with students who are with the respective time zones of different students based on their geographical location. So, I mean, this shouldn't be an issue, but sometimes it could be one. Platform dependence. So uh, there's a reliance on Preply's platform functionality and updates. There's also a reliance on their algorithm. There's a reliance on um, how often they will show your profile um, and how well your profile competes with the thousands of other profiles that are out there. That could seem a little bit daunting, right? So uh, that's a, a reality right there as well. Technical issues, impacting lessons, so competition, visibility. Uh, there's high competition among tutors. Uh, maintaining visibility and attracting new students could be a Difficult for some teachers, especially if they are non-native speakers and they would like to teach a lesson or sorry, teach a language or if they are teaching a subject that they do not have the most certification or experience in teaching. Number six, payment and earnings. So understand Preply's commission structure. Depending on your expectations, it's not great. Depending on your expectations, it's fantastic. So we'll look at that in a moment. Um, student expectations. So some students expect way more than what you are compensated to provide. Some students will be incredibly happy and you should celebrate those victories. You'll need to meet diverse learning needs and preferences. This is a funnel for people from all over the world. Um, adapting teaching styles, depending on the student. Um, and depending on how much you need the work, I mean, sometimes you won't be in a position to be very picky about who you accept. Um, but it all comes down to you. Feedback and reviews. So managing critical feedback and maintaining high reviews. This is like any time you put yourself out there on the internet and there's the possibility for review. Well, sometimes people will act on emotion and give you uh, very, very critical reviews that you might not agree with, right? Or sometimes people will really be uh, generous with their reviews as well. Um, and encouraging positive reviews could be tricky. Again, some students are very, very picky. Professional development, continuously improving your teaching skills, staying updated with new teaching methods and tools, and of course, Teach Ahead is here to help you with that. All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to lesson number seven. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the strengths of Preply. So, what gives Preply an edge over other similar language teaching or just uh, tutoring platforms? Um, and what are some benefits that Preply provides to its tutors? Let's find out. The perks of teaching on Preply. So number one, the platform benefits. There's a global student base. There, are, uh, there is access to millions of learners via top search results, uh, social media, and referrals. It's almost just as likely to find students on Preply as it would be on Google because of how massive the, um, the base is for finding students. Um, but it is streamlined to one-on-one -on -one lessons with tutors. Student management. So Preply handles promotions, engaging content, uh, messaging, and gamification on its platform. Um, and this is likely to continue to develop throughout the 2020s and beyond. And business support, 24-7 customer support, uh, secure payments, easy scheduling, business tracking, um, a mobile app, and safe messaging. So from what you could expect in 2024 uh, from a tutoring platform, Preply pretty much has it all and is one of the trailblazers, one of the pioneers, one of the front runners um, of all of these kinds of businesses. There is also a plethora of teaching tools, so the virtual classroom with video conferencing, whiteboard notes, chat, and reactions. Um, AI tools, so you could create personalized lessons, topics, reduce prep time. We spoke before about creating learning plans. 
learning materials. So there are free resources for English and Spanish teachers. It's likely that in the future, these materials will expand to other subjects as well. And placement te tests. So the placement tests are available for, for multiple languages to assess student levels. Um, of course, the validity, the um, quality of these tests will likely improve as time goes on. Um, and with the help of artificial intelligence. And finally, professional development. And this is one of the areas where uh, coming from the perspective of a teacher, Preply really has an edge. Uh, their certification, free language teaching certificate and professional development resources, um, courses and webinars. So access to hundreds of free courses, weekly webinars and a tutor community and community events. So to, there's a tutor's cafe, annual tutor's conference, and a global network of tutors. So that way you could feel like you're part of a community and you could really network and have those moments where you interact with colleagues. Here is the earning potential on Preply. So these these pages are all available on Preply's website. Again, we are condensing everything to um, condensing everything for you. Uh, so you could see what the highest paying online tutoring jobs are by subject. So for example, business teaching jobs could uh, they're about fifty five dollars per hour average salary. Corporate finance, sales teacher, law teacher, JavaScript, psychology, etc. Right, Hebrew teacher, thirty one dollars per hour. Um, just because English or French are not on this list does not mean that you can't make forty or fifty dollars per hour. Because, of course, this is an average from thousands of profiles, right? Um, but this is this gives you an idea of what you could be expecting to make, especially at the beginning. Utilize your skills. Look at all of the jobs, uh, the types of, you know, classified ads and uh, types of um, positions that are open at Preply. You could teach business, uh, teach tests, economics, computer science, uh, writing, math. You could teach Punjabi, Slovak, Latin, so, so different languages. Uh, there are other teaching jobs, uh, for example, for different um, uh, so software development uh, language or, or, or coding. Um, there are tutoring jobs for arts, for acting, for music, and business English courses. Fill the skill gap. So there is an op there's an option where learners could actually post different ads for what they're they are looking for from a teacher right different businesses and learners and other parties could actually go on to preply and post an advert where you could actually go and apply to teach right they will put what they're expecting uh, they will put a little bit of information um, about their the service that they are looking for and they will put the the um, desired pay as well. So this is another way that you could connect with individuals. Um, to be as fair as possible to Preply, um, Preply is the, the blessing and the curse is how easy it is to get started. The curse is that there are so many other people from all over the world that you are competing with. But in fairness to Preply, we do see that there are so many different avenues for you to develop as a teacher, for you to, to um, connect with individuals from around the world and to increase the likelihood of finding work and of securing some either part-time passive income or some full-time um, consistent income, depending on how often you work on there and what you're kind of like where you're living and what your um, lifestyle is like. All right. Hello, everyone. Let's talk about lesson number eight. Uh, welcome to lesson number eight, the limitations of Preply. Let's dive in. So the limitations and the drawbacks of Preply. So in lesson number six, we spoke about the challenges. When we discussed the challenges, we were talking specifically uh, the type of challenges you will likely encounter as a language teacher online. 
right here we're looking at not just from the language teacher's perspective, but really the drawbacks of Preply overall and some of the potential limitations. Um, we have discussed in the previous module how Preply has really risen to the occasion um, and set itself apart from so many other platforms that do what it does. Um, through its continual um, development of its platform, its resources, professional development. But with that being said, there are a few challenges that are hard to overcome based on the nature of it being an online language or an online education platform in the year of 2024. Um, so what we discuss here are a few things that uh, might be applicable to other platforms as well. Number one, the high commission fees. So compared to other platforms, uh, Preply does have high commission fees. Um, Preply deducts a significant commission from tutors' earnings, impacting overall income. And this is, for a lot of you, what you're here for. This is your bread and butter. You're here to make money. And we know that this is very important. Um, you start at 33% uh, commission, and after 400 hours, this goes down to 18%. And that's it. It doesn't go any lower. So... You know, 18 cents of every dollar is going to Preply. We understand that's a lot um, for some of you. For others, uh, it's okay. For some of you, you might see that there's a healthy give and take between how much Preply invests in its tutors, in its services, in its uh, platform, the application, uh, the um, professional development, the resources, the AI tools. Uh, for other teachers who might not use those things or find much value in those things, they might think, hey, that, all I see is high fees, 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 right? So it's uh, kind of subjective. Technical issues. So there are occasional platform glitches and connectivity problems, which can disrupt lessons. There's a reliance on Preply's technical stability for smooth lesson delivery. So your lessons are supposed to be conducted through Preply's classroom or Preply space, which is different from other platforms where you can meet on Zoom or meet via Skype, right? Um, so this is one of the areas where if Preply has any problems, uh, you're kind of like at the mercy of the functionality of uh, its, um, its platform, right? So that could be a little bit of a drawback. And student cancellations, uh, we spoke about this before, even when we discussed the challenges, there are frequent cancellations or rescheduling by students. This can disrupt a teacher's schedule and income flow. And of course, the trial lessons you don't make any money in the trial lessons. The trial lessons go 100% uh, to Preply. So it's a 100% commission, which is one of the areas where people are, don't like uh, working on Preply as well, especially because if there are cancellations, there's nothing in it for the tutor. The tutor doesn't get any of the money from the lesson, right? So that could be a little bit of a drawback too. Professional development. So even though Preply has really invested in professional development, and we at Teach Ahead see that uh, from our experience teaching in uh, for different online companies, Preply is really few and far, far between of you know uh, platforms that really care about this. Um, it does struggle to stay updated with new teaching methods and tools and to really train its tutors in that area. Uh, to continue continuously improve teaching skills could be a difficulty and few streams of career development. So you could become a tutor on Preply, but there aren't too many like higher levels of being a tutor. Even if you're a super tutor, there aren't many avenues to actually climb the corporate ladder, so to speak, to be maybe a manager or a team lead leader or something like that. So one of the down one of the challenges of working on such a global platform is that you are also com competing with so many other individuals. And you need to remember that Again, Preply does not employ you. You are self-employed using Preply as a meeting ground, right? 
there's a high competition. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Uh, the ease of access to Preply um, also leads to fierce competition. And there's a lack of job security. Of course, there's no pension. There are no benefits. There's no vacation pay. You're getting p paid hourly. And even with that, it depends on whether you could get students or not, right? Hello everyone, welcome to lesson number nine where we are going to just run through a few useful resources before you get started on Preply or before you continue to get better on Preply. Let's begin. All right, so let's just go through them. The Preply blog, uh, you could access articles, tips, and strategies for effective tutoring. A lot of the content from this PowerPoint presentation and this course overall has come from the Preply blog, the tutor, uh, FAQs, the help center, uh, Preply's community forum, uh, Preply's YouTube channel, Preply's tutor academy, uh, Preply's tutor handbook, Preply support. And of course, come on over to Teach Ahead. We have a YouTube channel, Instagram channel, a LinkedIn channel. We have uh, dozens of video courses Everything is based on educational technology. Everything focuses and um, it is focused on teaching online, all right? So no matter what the course is, it has that kind of uh, focus to it. Um, Teacher has online language teacher resource repository, which is 100% free. And Teacher Head's Teach Online Starter Pack, where we will have a lot of resources that you could find on other language teaching platforms, um, but it's all together for you. And it's a little bit more focused and streamlined to, um, you know, the real experiences. It, it's more in tune with the authentic experiences of online tutors. Check out Preply's Tutor Development Hub. Uh, you could access the Tutor Development Hub via the Academy tab on your Preply dashboard. New Tutor section offers courses tailored for beginners covering platform navigation, reaching students, and using the Preply classroom. The PD section provides courses, webinars, and articles to enhance teaching skills and career, um, including young learners course, lesson planning, zero prep, speaking activities, etc. The Preply development team has 35 plus years of combined tutoring and training experience. Um, for teaching related questions, tag the tutor development team in the Preply tutors community and explore the tutors academy for more insights. Preply courses for tutors. So these are free courses that you could take as a tutor. How to teach a language, courses for new tutors, uh, teaching trial lessons, um, grow your business, teaching tips and techniques, teaching working professionals, teaching young learners and teens, teaching exam preppers, courses for tutors of Spanish. Again, hopefully this catalog will grow as time goes on, but we at Teach Ahead are here to fill in all the gaps that these uh, platforms do not fill or that these platforms have left, okay? So that means we cover other um, topics that might help you as an online language teacher. And finally, everyone, welcome to lesson number 10, the final lesson in this free crash course of teaching on Preply in the 2020s. This lesson will really be a segue into taking other courses at Teach Ahead, um, free and otherwise. Um, this is a very short module where we're just going to kind of cover a few trends in teaching online in the 2020s uh, so that you could go to Preply and put your best foot forward, get your feet wet and, you know, start to explore your teaching style, but also to know that we are here, our community is here, our resources are here to help you to continue to develop professionally as time goes on. So here are a few key trends um, in online pedagogy, AI powered personalization, Check out our YouTube channel for um, tutorials on how to use um, AI tools. VR integration, gamification of learning, micro learning and bite sized lessons. That's what this kind of course is. We're trying to provide, you know, shorter lessons. Um, 
mobile learning applications, social learning platforms, data-driven instruction, remote teaching collaborations, interactive whiteboard tools, emphasis on cultural competency, even when we are working on global platforms to uh, respect cultures and to celebrate culture. Online language exchanges, tandem learning, digital badges and certifications, increased focus on pronunciation and speaking skills, hybrid teaching models, professional development for online language teachers, and much, much more. We have it all at our site. So follow Teach Ahead to teach with EdTech more efficiently and effectively. Our um, core values are relevance, applicability, practicality, and learner-centeredness. Thank you so much, everybody, for taking this quick course. Um, all of the links are below um, or linked to this module. We want to make online education um, as efficient and effective as possible. So uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next course. Um, with that being said, happy learning and happy teaching.